Okay, welcome into Strange Ways, episode 24. Back to the album track rankings, and uh, that is your boy Scott to let you know what we're doing. Dudes, we're going to do something kind of cool today. I mean, uh, cooler than I remembered. Here we go, man. I, I hate to be a self-inflicting, contradicting machine here, bro, but uh, I found out I liked uh, let's give you some 3D here if you can see it. But anyway, it's probably tough to see on there. But Psycho Circus Guys, uh, album that I I wanted to throw in, in trash can. Um, that uh, my first sc screensaver. You know, I bought this when it came out and. Believe it or not, it was a, uh, it has got a screensaver on it when you put the CD in your computer. If you can find a computer nowadays, it's got a damn CD ROM on it. Well, what the hell do they take CD ROMs off of the computers for? But anyway, that uh, pisses me off. Don't even get me started. <clears throat> oh man, hell, I, I, when I worked, uh, I, not to get off short story, I worked security guard third shift man at this place. That was my last full time job I had. And, that was my thing. I'd pack my computer, man. I'd have movies and 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 stuff. I've got mm -hmm. all my music downloaded on it already, you know. And I'd sit in there, man. And you know, third shift, you ain't really got much action going on. That passed my time in between my rounds and yeah. whatever I had to do. So, and and I'll then I'll, you, it, it, I'll, it's a goddamn conspiracy. I swear to God, it <laughs> is because they they want you to now fucking. Oh, you want to pass time? Well, I'll play these online games or stream this movie from this online service. They don't want anybody to have a physical fucking copy of anything anymore. A guy I had to go out and buy an external fucking DVD ROM just because some of my applications still require, you know, like uh, when you when you're talking about some graphics editing and some like uh, even some of my DAW stuff for music recording and stuff. A lot of that shit is fully packed on cds yet and i'm not going to go out and fucking order the online you know download fuck you they, know, they, it cost me 30 dollars to get an external at walmart so don't tell me it costs a dell or hp or apple or whoever too much money to put them in a drive it's just that the way technology has gone since cds and dvds came out ever since then it was Fuck everybody. We don't care how we're inconveniencing you. We're on to the next technology, so we're just going to make this cease to exist. There are cars that don't even have CD players in them anymore. You know what? Uh, it's just about it. It's it don't take up that much space, man. It slides right in the side. What the yeah. fuck is so inconvenient about that? And why would you not think people would want that? You know? Still, well, they, they know people want it. They know people want it, dude. They you want you to stream to, it. You got to buy shit to get what you yeah. now, man. It's nitpicky. It's just like it's just like Office or Windows or whatever program you would normally buy once a year as the new one came out, and throughout the year you'd get the free updates. Now they have what's called 365 for everything, which means you've got to fucking buy it every single fucking year, regardless if it's changed or not. And it, it's just, it's all a scam to get the hard copy out of people's hands and make you fucking buy everything right from them online. It's nah, whatever. Fuck that. fuck that. Yeah. Anyway, back to Psycho Circus. Our rant, we got it over early today. <laughs> yeah. I didn't know he was as pissed off about it than I was. So I oh. know, man. It's it. Anything to inconvenience. Okay. That's all I got. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I believe, let's see, uh, who finished off on the last one? I started the last one, I think. Peter, what was the last one? Peter, Peter Chris. Chris. Uh, yeah, so I, I don't fucking remember. Just go. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think I, I think I might have started it, but it don't matter. Like you said, man, screw it. Who's right. keeping up, right? Well, yep. Look, can I put my two cents in? Because you kind of started yours, and then we got sidetracked yeah, man. Yeah, about you, how you yeah. you were gonna throw this in the trash, and and now you're finding yourself, you know, singing a different tune. Um, what I've learned from doing this, and I'm so grateful that 
you know, I, I got you in a podcast with me now because I would really only when I was doing this shit on my own, do stuff that I knew I liked to review and to, and to rank. Uh, so it's forced me out of my comfort zone and forced me and a couple of commenters have said the same thing. Damn, y'all forced me to go back and watch this. Yeah. Uh, listen okay. to this again. And what I'm going to say is what I've kind of figured out, at least for me, and I'm not counting the 70s or even the early 80s, but once I got out of high school, so about revenge, and granted, Kiss didn't have a lot of albums, and that that paid a lot of, uh, you know, that, that went a long ways towards what happened here. Having few albums and being few and far between, you'd be so excited because you had to wait so fucking long, you know, in the old days, once a year. Uh, that if it didn't completely blow your fucking mind, you immediately shit on it because you were disappointed. And if nothing jumped off the page for you, like whatever, it's I stole your love, shout it out loud, heavens on fire, whatever, you're like, well, I'm never listening to this fucking thing again. Yeah. And, and I've been pleasantly surprised with everything we've went back and had to listen to except Monster. And, <laughs> and Peter Chris. This album, yeah, yeah. Uh, I always kind of deem this album a half good album and a half skippable album. And right now I spent before we did this, I will, I listened to the entire thing in order in its entirety, kicking back and just chilling. And I fucking love this fucking CD. I don't know what my problem was, or maybe it's just having a reaction channel for the last year. Listening to all this modern music makes me really appreciate good music. Yeah. I don't know what the deal is, but I'm telling you right now, there's not a song on this album that I can say I do not like. I don't love them all, but I didn't have to skip, nor did I feel the urge to skip a single track. Well, I'm glad you brought that up, but I'm going to tell you why why we hate it so bad. I'm, I mean, I'm just going to tell you, it ain't really got nothing to do with music. It's got to do with a different thing that happened for you and me at the time when everybody found out how this son of bitch was done and shit on. Your group was torn apart. My yeah. group was supposed to be back together, and then you find out it's all horse shit. You know, so, yeah, yeah. You, you do hang on to that shit, man. I, I, I don't care who you are. If you have yeah. a passion for yeah, that, like we do. You, that, that, makes, that makes actually perfect sense because you were piped and pumped for the original four to be working together. Yeah. I was immediately comparing it to revenge. So, you know, it, it's a lose, lose situation for us. Yeah. 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 And <laughs> seeing it started out being, you know, I was on cloud nine, bro. So, but, and, it, but I, I've been trying and doing pretty well with putting whatever we listen to, Focus on the music. Forget about what was going on. Forget about how you felt about it at one time. This is now, not then. And just taking it. And it's uh, it's changed to me, man. It, it really has. Yeah. I, I love this thing when it came out. I will say that. And it just didn't grow on me over time. Plus, you had all the shit that, that in between that I just said. I won't get on it no further, but we'll drag it on. And I'm not going to go too much further in until we get to the songs, but there are yeah. two very, very cool things about this album that I just, I, I want to say I would have had to have realized it at the time, but it struck me as, oh my God, like I'd never noticed it before tonight. So, okay, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. And I did too, in a way, because of the song so, um, that I didn't like. Or thought I didn't like, now I do. So there you go. But I will say, number, you got 10 tracks. Number 10 is, of course, and it's been there since the beginning, is the ballad of They Got Peter Singing. Uh, now, I will say this I do not really care for it, but Peter sings it good. I mean, Peter's voice is still, uh, had, Peter's voice ain't never really went away that I, far as I know. Uh, but, uh, damn, to me, could you guys not have come up with something a little bit more not so stereotypical or, and, uh, you know, why couldn't Peter have something a little raw 
on here instead of soft. That would have been interesting, you know, like bad reputation on his, because uh, it was right. This was right after that, about four years. So anyway, that's my least favorite one. It's not horrible like I used to wipe my ass when he wrote and tell everybody if they like that, they was crazy as hell. Uh, no, you're not. It's not bad. It's just a damn dun 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 dun. and it's him singing like you know he's finally found his way back to the fake band that they are and all. I'm not gonna get into it. There you go. Number ten. Let me. Okay. I think we've kind of touched on that before. Ever since Beth yeah. gone, our our strange ways getaway mainline baby driver hooligan. Um, I mean, I, I know all two of those came after Beth, but really since God, modern times, anything to do with Peter, Chris, I mean, it's like, everything's got to be the next Beth. Everything's got to be a ballad from Peter and some of his best stuff were before that was ever a thing. Uh, I don't, I don't like that. They always have to give him a ballad. I would like to know the truth, the God's the honest truth. And, and, and a little prep on this I did, which I usually don't do. Um, there was so much fucking dysfunction going on during the recording of this. Now I heard rumors that Paul so badly didn't want to work with Ace and Peter in the studio that they each got paid $850,000 to stay away. I don't know how much truth there is to that or not. I don't know if Peter's assigned a ballad or if he comes in and says he wants to do a ballad. I don't know. You, you look at everybody's books, you look at the, the, you know, the quotes from, from, interviews and shit and everybody's got a different take i don't know if they're all so fucking four of them so delusional that none of them really knows what the truth is or or what but how could four people have four completely different stories seemingly about everything uh but anyway yeah i, I think that's kind of why that ballad shit is just trying to be the next beth and i don't know if it's peter's choice or paul and gene's choice but yeah i, I kind of see why they do that i, I don't agree with it but I don't either. And, uh, all right. My number 10 could have been a good, good, good song if they would have done something different with the chorus. And that is, you wanted the best. I love, you know, the trade off with all the members. I love, well, I was going to say Peter's, you know, drumming through this, but it ain't Peter. Uh, but it's Peter's style like, while they're doing their verses. It's so cool. And then you go, you wanted the best. Well, you got the best. It's like, what happened? We just went into Down Syndrome territory for the chorus when we had this, you know, rocking, you know, pumping verse. Uh, I think if they would have done something different with the chorus, I would like it much more. I still think it's a very cheesy callback to the intro that they get, you know, live in concert. I mean, it's it's almost like they were force feeding us trying to live on the seventies, um, and that don't work. You're not in the seventies anymore, and yeah, we all know you're introduced. You wanted the best, you got the best. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we need a song called that? I mean, it just seemed a little, you know, contrived and 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 cheesy. But the song itself's pretty cool if it wouldn't be for the chorus. Okay, <clears throat> I will say this before I go any further. Um, they reached as far as the stars could reach to try everything they could on this album because, in my opinion, they knew they were never going to be recording another album again with them on the cover before they even done it. And um, that's you know that that's why you got the ballad they're trying to get a damn Beth hit out of this thing man and they're you know all this shit but that because and you wanted the best they're gonna throw every anthem they can on there man to try to we're back baby but you know let's sell this firewell or storage out psycho circus to her i guess so. speaking of speaking of what you said where they had already let the they knew in interviews or whatever there was not going to be another album Here's something I just found tonight in in doing a little prep work on this album in this time. Uh, Paul eventually saying, well, we, this can't be the last Kiss record. That's a terrible Kiss memory to end on. And I'm thinking, 
and Monster is not? And yet, I mean, this, blow, this blows Monster and Sonic Boom out of the water six ways of Sunday. It's yes. just, I don't think he actually yeah. means what he fucking says. I think he just holds such a bitterness towards Ace and Peter that he doesn't want his legacy to remember with theirs. He wants to be past them, above them, with them a distant fucking, you know, rear view mirror type object. And this would have been the last kiss of them would have been, he would have been forced to explain why the original members weren't on. I think he tried once that got out. He found out the backlash and he wanted to move on as quickly as fucking possible from both of them and onto something, some studio albums without them and, and just show that they weren't needed. And you didn't have to do that. You showed they weren't needed for over 12 years through the eighties. I, I just, at some point in time, I get tired of being hard on Ace and Peter for their unprofessionalness and their substance abuse because Paul takes it too fucking far. He holds a grudge too fucking long, and he doesn't even give someone a chance to redeem themselves. Gene seems to be more willing to give that chance. I was actually shocked when Paul agreed to do that cover video with Ace for uh, the Bad yeah. Company song. Yeah, I, I was shocked. Fucking I, was, right. I thought, okay, good. Fucking Paul's finally gotten over it. And then we go right back to the mudslinging 10 minutes later. And it's just, in a way, I don't blame Ace for, for the crap he runs his mouth on, especially when 10,000 Volts came out and he went on his podcast tour. Yeah, uh, be, because Paul never, ever says a kind word about him or Peter, or if he even mentions them at all. And Gene don't um, either. No, Gene, Gene has a tendency to be stuck on repeat. All of his fucking interview quotes, you could trace back to the fucking 80s. Uh, I, I'd show you my tongue, but the floor's dirty. I mean, if I, I just everything he's always, so he, every time he's asked about Peter and Ace, he feels compelled to say, well, you know, they were substance abusing and they were, you know, danger to themselves. He just can't move past. But Ace is not helping himself by bringing it up how you know he's going to show kiss and and i'm better than kiss and i'm and i'm thinking dude stop i mean paul and gene may be out of line but at least they're not fucking lying i mean you're lying man <laughs> i don't I, I can't blame him because you know he, he stood back for a long time and and took the shit that they constantly repeatedly fucking said about him and peter and he did play like peter for a long time and i guess he just fucking got tired of it dude i I mean, I can't blame him. I mean, for fuck's sake, guys, you're 70 fucking years old, man. Or what, what are we in fucking preschool here? For it's like watching damn. grumpy old men. It, these oh, fucking four need to be forced in a goddamn room and, and sort this shit out once and for all. So at least we can have interviews until one of them passes without negative shit being spewed about the other side. Just let it go. I just don't yes. understand. What good yeah. does it do? Mr. Paul Stanley, Mr. I spent a lifetime with a shrink and I'm the bigger person and I'm, I've grown and I have a family now and people need to be kind and don't make fun of people with deformities, all this crap, but he can't live his own fucking preaching testimony of let the shit go. If you can't got nothing nice to say, don't say nothing at all. Just let it go. Yeah. If they're not infringing in your life, why the fuck are you even talking about them? Okay? But another thing about that, I was going to say, when you said put them in a room, back when they began, if they had a problem once a week, Bill of Coin made them do that. If you got a problem with somebody, we're hashing it out. Every yep. week, we're going to get, get, get it off our shoulders, guys. And that, they got away from that as time went on. And uh, if you'll notice one thing about Paul, and Gene's not as bad about I, I don't think I've ever, I don't know if I've ever heard Gene say this before, but Paul, when something new comes out, whatever they've done in the past is shit. This right here is, he's always promoting what's going on now. That last album ain't shit to this album. This is the deal. You're just going to be the biggest tour, the best album. It's it, okay, I, I hate, man. But, you, but don't wipe your ass with creatures of the night. 
and you know, lick it up is going to be good, what, but the motherfuckers can say, it, bro. What, you, what kind you, of you business can't. model is that? I don't, I don't who, think, man. I don't who understand. fucking does that? What other business does the Chevy roll out? The new You're Camaro old. and say, oh, yeah, that piece of shit Camaro from 10 years ago. Look at this one. Who, he, he, he claims this band is his life and his legacy, yet you're right. Every album that comes out is now the best, and the rest of that stuff was garbage. He'll ignore it as, as soon as he gets done. He's like, oh, that was a bad kiss album when he looks back on it five years later. Or I don't know what we were thinking then. <laughs> I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, dude. You don't even like your own body of work. What the fuck are you even doing in the business anymore? I really want And at least like let us like it because where he thinks he's disrespecting his own art because he thinks he should have done better, what he's doing is shitting on every one of us fans who liked what he's now shitting on. And everybody that played on the damn record, too. Yes. Why? You've heard it's great. I don't, I don't, I don't get that one either, dude. That one... Uh, that's crazy. Uh, All right, I round will, number two out of the way. Yeah, we got uh, yeah yeah we got number two, Grant. And I'll say one thing before I get number nine in is when I was uh, right before Crazy Nights came out. This was back when you know you bought the magazine. I was still getting the magazines and stuff, you know, back in the day. Circus, whatever, Hit Parade, or whatever the hell. It was. Paul said in there. That this is going to be a mix between Animal Eyes and Destroyer. This was crazy nights, bro. And before the album came out, how the hell? How the hell do you get between Animal Eyes and Destroyer, bro? That's, it, 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 I do remember that. I never forgot that. I never forgot that, and hung on to that because as soon as that damn cassette came well, out, don't, that's don't, what don't, it was. don't you remember I, all the synthesizers on Destroyer? Yeah, man. Yeah, 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 yeah. You don't remember all those synthesizers going on in God of Thunder? Yeah, and, and Animal Eyes too, man. You know, uh, Mark yeah. Saint Collins yeah. ripping the guitar in it. But anyway, it, hey, if that's what he feels, go for it, bro. You know. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, uh, number nine. Uh, I love the man for so much of the stuff he's done. It's been a big part of my life, but. I just wonder how far the wormhole goes up here, man. You know, I just, but anyway, uh, you just touched on it, bro. We almost hit it. You wanted the best. And for the reasons you said, the chorus and Gene's, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Damn, bro. Yeah. He does that through the whole Sonic Boom and Monster album, I think. He's like, what are you, what is that for? Why are you doing that? It just, there's no point. I, I swear to God, there. I, I swear to God, their their way of trying to recapture the '70s is to listen to all the sound bites from those albums and repeat them. Gene, especially with the ooh yeahs and, and stuff, like, dude, you ain't done that in fucking twenty years. What the fuck are you doing? What song did he do that? Oh no, I'm trying to think of the '70s songs where he goes, oh yeah. Shout it out loud. Shout it oh. out loud. Oh, yeah. I mean. Yeah, okay. I don't know. And, it was the and demon thing. The, it was the whole demon thing. thing. He does it live a lot. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. You know, in God of Thunder and stuff, you know, he, he does it yeah. a lot of live. So maybe that's what it transitioned from, too, you know. so But, dude, the way it starts, the singing, the chorus, I, I, this song is not bad and like i said we're already in there's some i i haven't got the parts of the song now to talk about that i don't like the rest of it i fucking love i mean but the yeah. chorus uh, yeah 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 i mean dude okay hey right, you're pumped up that's cool but just do it when you're not freaking recording um that's it. Do it live because you have the energy in the moment and you're saying, yeah, to pump the crowd. You don't need it recorded on the studio album. We're used to it live. Go to town, brother. You know, so, yeah. but not a bad song. But yeah, the chorus could have. Uh, I do love the. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like on, uh, you know what, come on today when I was 
uh, going to the gym or coming back one on my flash drive. Russian roulette. Oh, oh yeah, great stuff. I, I was rocking the hell out of it, man. Dude. So yeah, I, yeah, I like. I seem to like now that they do that when I didn't before. So make that right. make sense. Yeah. Okay, my number nine, I used to despise this song, and actually I found it somewhat enjoyable, is Into the Void. Um, I, I'm guilty and admit it, I hate the stereotypical electrocution or space, you know, MO that Ace seemingly has to have all the fucking time, so immediately I'm irritated, right, but Turns out this is a pretty fucking good song, and I really like the chorus. Uh, not to the, not so much the into the void part, but Ace is gonna get away. I mean, he pulls out some of that hard times Ace freely in there that I like so much. So it, it's surprised me. I actually, I enjoyed the song. Well, if you if you pay attention to it close enough, you'll 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 see the fatal flaw in Ace's songs with a chorus. Save your love, yeah. Into the boy, hey, what? What is it? What is it with Aces and yeah. horses? Man, it, okay, somebody's got to stand at attention, and on this album, it's got to be Gene or Paul, because of course Ace ain't really got you know Peter ain't got no say so. But anyway, but uh, yeah, it's that, that one grew on me a little bit more than I thought too, dude. I hated that damn song. Uh, not hated, yeah, so did I. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Okay. My next one is uh, a song that I've heard you talk about. And you really, I guess you really like this song. And I, I love the intro to this song. And I love how the hell Paul sings this song. But the chorus, uh, here we go with another chorus. I do not like it. It's raise your glasses. I don't understand. Uh, what are we talking about here? Are we are we are we raising our glasses with champagne? Are we raising our glasses on our heads? What kind of glasses are we fucking raising here, dude? Um, and, yeah, you know, it, I, 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 you know, and he, uh, it's everyone around the nation. Raise your glasses. You know, it's not horrible, but it's just the song is he sings his ass off on this damn song, dude. Dude, I mean, way better than I thought because I hadn't sit and listened to some of these albums all the way through, man. I couldn't tell you, man. You know, uh, but I do like the song. I love the how it comes in. It's rocking. I love when he comes in. I took a ride with a one way. T- I mean, that is oh, bad rough. ass, bro. It is, <laughs> and it's kind of a different voice. I don't. I wonder if it's something yeah. they done in the studio with him, man. That I like. It is. I like it, it is. I don't. I don't want to. I'll touch on it when I discuss it, but I'll tell you what I think it is. <laughs> That's my number eight, and. The only one I didn't really like that great is the ballad. The rest of them's got a lot that I like, and maybe a part that I don't. Till we get to where there you go. Okay, so my number eight. Speaking of the ballad, is I finally found my way. I normally would mock and ridicule this song any chance I got. Um, I need to get over that bullshit resentment that I have for what Beth did to Kiss. This actually, to me, and I know you've got nostalgia and personal reasons, but audibly to me, this is a better song. This is a better song than Beth. (laughs) Yes. Understand my background. I absolutely love the combination of symphony and rock. I love it. That's why Kiss Alive Symphony is one of my favorite live albums. The symphony in this is much like uh, every time I look at you. It's such a compliment to the song. And he, like you said, his voice has not gone anywhere. Now, that's, I think, partially the benefit of most people who do not sing as a lead singer 
a hundred dates a year. You know, you're, you're going to save your voice, you know, a lot longer. It's cheesy, but every Peter ballad is cheesy. Uh, if you were to tell him, if you were to put this on his solo album, this would probably be number one or two, probably number two behind toss and turn in for me over easy thing. I not saying I love this song. I'm saying it's respectable. It's a decent, mellow listen if you're in the mood for that, which I hardly ever am. Uh, but I I see so much more diversity in this song and so much more going on than what you see in Beth. And again, I'm not saying Beth's a terrible song. I think it's the most overrated Kiss song ever. I'm not saying it's a terrible song. I'm saying when you... The symphony adds so much in this, and yes, I know there were some strings in Beth, but not to this level. Uh, it just, for my musical taste, it does more for me. So not nearly the crapper I thought it was. Okay. I just, I'm not a symphony guy. You are. That's where we yeah. get from that. And yeah. I'm not complaining about the Kiss symphony thing. I've got it, you know, on dvd whatever you know and it is very good i mean considering but it's not something that i would want to see or hear all the time by no means yeah uh, but but i understand everybody's got their different different thing man so um okay all right my next one you touched on already a song or two ago into the void now Ace is from Jandale, so he had to come through the void, I guess, to get here. Um, now, I'm not crazy about the intro for this song, but when he starts singing, I'm losing power, and I don't know why. I mean, I I love... I, it's a lot like... It, the, the style of the verse is a lot like Shock Me. It's, it's close, yeah, and... And I love the verse. I love the verses. The chorus, I I, I'm, I just ain't crazy about dragging out the boy, you know. But uh, everything else besides the very beginning intro and the stretching out of Void, uh, I like about this song that I did not before or I just snubbed it, pissed off at it, the whole album, and just... Screw it, you know it sucks. You know, uh, you know. I'm. I guess I'm trying to grow up a little bit too. So, you know. Yeah. My number seven, and you're not going to believe this, or maybe you will. Uh, when I say if a Kiss album didn't hit me immediately in my adult life, I was out, and I'd just go back to the songs that hit me, and I'd never re-listen to the ones that didn't. I'm sitting there chilling, listening to this thing in order. And when the final track came on, I had no fucking idea what it was. Uh, and I've heard the name, the title, and I know I had to have heard it once when I bought the album. But as the, the beginning's going, I'm like, what the fuck is this? I don't fucking remember this. And it's Journey of a Thousand Years. Yes. It is, it is very only you-ish with the vibe uh very very um it's almost got the egyptian guitar sound that you know i i really love but i'll tell you what made this for me and and is one of the two things that i did not notice before at least to my recollection wow this may not be the greatest kiss album or even close to it but Whoever had the plan to arrange the song order on this album was a fucking genius because the end of Journey of a Thousand Years plays on symphony the same fucking tune that starts Psycho Circus's fucking solo. That dan 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 It bookends the fucking album. They use that, that, that little riff to book and the fucking album. That is so fucking cool. Oh, uh, what's his so, name? Uh, the, the, uh, Mc Fairbane, Fairbane, McFarland, yeah. McFarland, yeah. or Fairbane, whatever his Fair, name is. Fairburn, Fairburn, yeah, Fairburn, whatever. Steve Fairburn, is that his name? Uh, but anyway, uh, dude, 
that's a song that I have always liked. And I and the symphony part in that don't it don't bother me with that song because it fits like hell. And yeah. Gene, yeah. if you pay attention to Gene's I mean, he screams in the echo. He's got that, oh, yeah, yeah. it's a triple, quadruple echo, man. Oh, my yeah. God. Uh, a lot of people don't give his song credit either, man. Not, I've heard nobody, I don't think, say they like it. And you're the only one that likes anything on here worse than the Peter song, I think. But. And that, and going into this, I figured that was a. I figured it was going to be a slam dunk. Nine and ten were going to be into the void, and finally found my way. Turns I out into the void was in the right spot, but I put finally found my way surprisingly at number eight. Surprisingly, surprised me. I remember saying that uh, earlier. I, I thought well, I would guarantee you we're going to lock horns on this one big time. We're going to be, but hey, that's the way it goes when you revisit something. And one more thing yep. about you wanted the best, you got the best. What is the the ending? No more war, no more war. What the hell? They're doing that. I don't know. They're doing some British accent. It's got to be a quote from a movie or a Pink Floyd song or something. I don't know. Yeah. It's an inside joke, I'm assuming. I didn't get it, but it's, <laughs> it don't bother me. me I'm just trying to figure no, out what No, the it's just is. weird. It's it just is. weird. You're like, what the hell is that? <laughs> um, okay, man. And that was your number seven. Seven. Okay, so for my number six, we're close, bro. We're so close. Journey of a Thousand Years. And it, hell, this song used to be higher. As a matter, as a matter of fact, uh, it was actually, I think, one more or two up before. But it, the, the song hasn't changed on me. It says another song or two has changed on me. That's why. Uh, this is a, it's not the demon song on here, but damn. It's a almost human type, twisted God of Thunder type, mix those up with some symphony, um, damn near sick, twisted solo album, some of the things, all together in a blender gene in one song to me. And it's it's all over the place with the violins and the Gene singing with his low tone voice and then hitting that high scream. I, 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 yeah. the, the the little gling, gling, you know. I I love I, I love the damn song now. I guess I guess one of the songs that I love man already. So I've always well, liked think how that I one. feel. I I this is like getting a new Kiss tune for me tonight. Because I, 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 if I, I had to have heard this because I always listen to any album I buy, especially Kiss album, front to back, right away. So I know I've heard it once, but to me, literally, this was like hearing it for the first time. So I got a brand new Kiss song that I can listen to. Hey, hey, you, <laughs> hey, you got that one good one too, bro. Hey, yeah, that's all. Awesome. That's, that's awesome, dude. Uh, when you forget about something, and then yeah. you, when you, when you rediscover it and you like it, that's what's yeah. really cool. Uh, all right. Okay. So my number six is a very, um, I don't want to compare it to Great Expectations, but it's got that that vibe. Uh, we are one. Uh, I love the message. Um, you know, I see my face looking back at me talking about the fans in, in the Gene Simmons makeup. And it's just a good tribute, even if it is in words only and not a true sentiment. Uh, tribute to the fans um, and it's a beautiful song a beautiful harmonized chorus I love the verses his kind of almost got a raspy voice doing the verses it's just a different side of Gene and I really really have always liked this song in fact though it has dropped because of the reemergence of songs I didn't think I liked as much as I did uh, so it's not a surprise I love this song. Uh, it does surprise me that I had to bump it down to number six. 
<clears throat> well, we will get there, and I agree. And Gene does, uh, he sings with a damn near different voice on this, too, man. And, yeah. But I yeah. love it. I love it. So, uh, yeah, man. All right. Number five, right? Yep. Five, Number yep. five. Okay. A song that was down probably eighth or whatever before. I pledge allegiance to the state of rock and roll. Wow. And it blew my fucking ears off today when I was cutting grass. I had my. It seems different to me when I listen to something through my headphones, man. I don't know why. Because I listen, I re entered the Ace song through my headphones today. And damn, dude, it's like totally listening to a different song. I had it on a killer system yesterday. Um, when I listen to it, but it hit me totally but, different. But, but, but headphones, if you got a decent pair of headphones or earbuds, the thing about that is it doesn't matter how loud or crystal clear your home system is. Those speakers, for whatever reason, when they're right up to your ears, you pick up different nuances that get lost in the shuffle. I, I remember yeah. I used to love uh, uh, Tesla's Mechanical Resonance album, their first album, I just fucking love it. And, you know, with little Susie, modern day cowboy and all these great songs, my favorite song back then, because it was when I got that, it, the Walkman was all the rage. Right. So we'd go walking around riding bikes and I have my Walkman. in. It. Well, in that song right before my eyes, the solo bounces back and forth ear to ear for I different notes. That. And I was like, holy fuck, what the fuck was that? I'd never heard nothing like that before because really? you don't pick I that up in a stereo. Yeah. Yeah. So maybe you're picking up different things on this song that you never caught before. You there? Okay. Okay. Okay, we got the countdown. All right. All right. Cool. Oh, it lets you take. What okay. countdown? But, uh, yeah, I pledge allegiance to the state of rock and roll, man. Rocking from front to back. Paul sings the shit out of this song, dude. And the state, you got that echo, man. It's, oh, dude. Yeah, man, I, I don't know. Cheesy, I don't care. Uh, it's, it's, I don't it's a fucking rocking tune, bro. It's yeah. Listen to stuff, guys, in headphones. If you really want to know how what you like, and, you know, you was mentioned in Tesla. You know, my favorite songs off that album, which I love the whole damn album, it is coming at you live and and uh, too late for love. Holy shit! But yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so that was your number five. Yes. Okay, so ding, ding, ding. We matched up with I Pledge Allegiance to the State of Rock and Roll. I know we have I, to say I originally found this title so annoyingly cheesy that I went into it even the first time listening like this is going to suck. Uh, but my God, does Paul kick some ass on this song. Uh, like you said, you're one of your favorite things to echo throughout this thing on his voice is just freaking amazing uh the chorus i love that da, 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 da. oh my god he is just this is one that could have been on creatures or lick it up with the yeah. attitude and the sound in his voice uh just a great fucking song after all damn right I, i'm we <laughs> on that i'm we on that. uh number four you just touched on it. <laughs> Boy, are we the one ahead or one behind here? A song that I have loved since day one. This is the these these next ones are all I've always felt the same. Um, we are one. Me too. Just like just like you said, man. That we are one has got. 
Okay, back in. Where did we leave off? I had your number four. We are one at number four that I love everything about. It's on you. Okay. Okay. So my number four is one you said, like you said, and you were correct that I had praised highly. And this one dropped probably two spots for me due to my new love affair with a couple of songs. And that is raise your glasses and to pick up with what you touched on the voice. It's almost, especially that middle section where he it comes down as I took a ride through. A, it's like there's a flanger or a phaser on his voice. Sounds yeah. cool. Uh, Darren, my other compadre on here from time to time, fucking hates when bands use effects. I fucking love it, provided they're the right effects, not that stupid singing through a megaphone effect like you know modern wow. music does. But flangers and phasers and choruses and echo, I love all that shit. And it's just oh. the right amount on that middle section to just make that middle section special. Like you said, the intro to this kicks ass. The chorus does leave a little to be desired, which is why it's never been one of my favorite, favorite Paul songs. But it's just got such, a sp if you got a good system, this fucker will shake your windows. The drums on this are mixed so well. Um, and, and of course, Paul's, you know, still at his powerful peak with his voice. So raise your glasses. Number four. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Well, I, it, it, it really, uh, it really hit me, man, this time, probably like never before. Uh, so I agree. All right. Number three and a song that I everybody on this damn planet uh that i've never heard anybody say anything good about that i can think of and i've always loved it because this song is almost like it doesn't fit here uh because this song is so not a stereotypical anthem and or ballad and uh it's like Revisiting Alice Cooper, I'm 18. I am only dreaming, bro. What a fucking song. And I've always loved it. And I didn't never understand the hate for this song. And I and I still don't to this day. What in the hell is not jamming and and Paul just ripping the damn thing up about this song do y'all not like? Because it don't fit the album like every other song title or anthem? I don't hey. understand. My number three doesn't fit this album either. Then technically, that's the beauty of Kiss. Y you you pick me an album, like any album, any fucking album, with the exception of Monster, because I just they've never had music like that before. But any of their original through like Revenge, there are songs intertwined that could have been better off on this album or that album. They always give you a mixture, and that in a knock for a lot of kiss podcasters is a benefit and a plus for me. I, I like a variety it. on an album. So I, sorry, yes. I interrupted your fucking take on dreaming. Oh, no, 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 no. That's fine. I, I'm just saying, I am only dreaming. I mean, damn dude, I can't understand why somebody don't like it. Maybe it's, is it me? Damn. Like, what's bad about the song? What's bad about his voice? What's bad about anything in that song? I would, I would bet those people. I, I would bet those people are the same people that don't like Rain off Carnival of Souls because it's the same type of. It's the dark Paul. Uh, so I guess either you love him or you don't when he does that style. I do. Apparently, you do. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> dream. I mean, man, dude, he's hanging it up there too, dude. And that was your number three too. No. Nope. Awesome. My number three is another song that would be classified doesn't fit on this album. And to me, that's a good thing. And it is one of the songs that could have been on Creatures Lick It Up or Revenge. And it is Within from Gene Simmons. This song is so badass. I, I, I can't even... This is always, these top four have always been my top four, just in different orders at one point or another. Uh, this song is so killer. Like I said, this could easily have 
been, you know, the starting of the second side of revenge to complement unholy starting the first side, or it could have been a track on creatures of the night. It's dark. It's evil. It's as close as you're going to get to the demon since the demon existed. Um, fabulous chorus be from within. I mean, he's yeah. just tearing your head off through the, and the, he's got that charisma verse, you know, Life without her. I mean, it's just, it's everything you'd ever want from a fucking Gene Simmons song. The demon song, brother. That is yeah. it. And we're going straight to it with my number two. With the brother. And it rocks your ass. Tell a metal head to listen to that and turn it up on his damn earphones. By gosh. Yeah. If it don't, if it don't, if that don't rock and shake your damn bones, brother. That them drums, man, they just, oh my God, you said it. Hey, that, I love it, always have. Gene sings his ass off on it, and he's twisting that voice all different directions, bro. Love it. I, 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 we, we've talked about this before. Imagine Creatures and Lick It Up Gene, Revenge Gene, or Within Gene, except on all of his songs on Asylum, Animalized, Crazy Nights, there would have been no drop in Kiss. There wouldn't have been a need for Paul to come up with, you know, 10 solo album songs on his own. It would have been that perfect mix instead of, you know, whatever Gene had become bringing the album down and putting all responsibility on Paul's songs to carry the album. Imagine that. You can have a Crazy Nights and then follow it up with a within i mean jesus christ i mean yeah they don't fit together i don't care kiss has never been uniformed on any album I've, i'll i'll live and die on that hill that i'm right i mean look go back to the first so album do you think kiss and time and, and love theme from kiss fit on that first album absolutely not no that would have been more of a dress to kill type vibe that's what i'm saying see <clears throat> okay hey I, Still I love it a great song is a great song I don't yep. give a shit if it is out of place. And, and as a matter of fact, it being out of place makes me notice it that much more. I, so, you know, uh, yeah. well, guys, I guess it's no, uh, it's no uh, surprise uh, what number one is for me. And I'm pretty sure uh, I, you too. I got to get to my, I got to get to my number two. Oh, oh, my bad. I, okay. Yeah, your I, number two was within, right? Yes. Yeah. Man. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Number two was pretty much always my number one, and it still is the greatest album intro and concert intro ever to be ignored. Oh. And that is uh, Psycho Circus. Not that they ignore the song, they ignore the fact that it can be, should be, have always been their opening song into the concert. Uh, this dropped because I just enjoyed something more earlier tonight. Uh, nothing much needs to be said about Psycho Circus. Paul, at the absolute height of his vocal power, uh, the breakdown, everything about this, the drums, the intro, carnival music, everything about this, and strong chorus. It's just absolute perfect song for this album. I'm trying to figure out what the hell your number one is. And, yeah, you're right. That's my number one. We're going straight to my number one because he just hit it. And it always has been my number one on this album. And when they first started performing it, I really did love it live. But I think as time went on, it was not the best one live for me. I just didn't think they could do the side, that part. I just didn't think they could pull that off that great at the time. But on here, Oh my gosh, the music video, everything about this song, the perfect video. I love the 3D video. It's got them all, man. And it, it does. It's, it's like it's coming right out at you when Ace releases that earth, man. It looks like it's coming right to your damn lap, bro. It's so many things on here. That skull head, dude, but it is all is on top form. On this song, whoever's jamming on this song is in top form, and it is absolutely a ripping ass song. The freaking makeup melting off his face. Oh yeah, just freaking, just 
just giving metal a new punch in the 90s, man, that's one thing I will say about albums like this that did come out at the time from older school bands. Grunge was already on its way out about this time, dude. It didn't last that long. No. So, no. Number one, the title track, Psycho Circus. If, and my I believe number I one, yeah, my number one crawls up from my number four, uh, and that is one you already ranked highly in Dreamin'. This song oh, is this song is so goddamn heavy. Um, it it reminds me a lot of the vibe, like I, I mentioned, of Rain. Yeah, okay, so it's got a slight resemblance to 18. You know how many songs I've found just in the last year that sound like they stole a line of the drums or a line of the guitars from a guitar from another song? And maybe they did. Oh, Guys, there's only so many different notes available, right? Eventually, you're going to line up somewhere. Maybe he borrowed the vibe of it. Maybe he did it on accident. Maybe he'd been listening to some Cooper three weeks ago, and it was in the back of his head, and he didn't even know it. I'd go through that all the fucking time. So fuck that. And number two, it's better than it's better than 18 anyway. And I'm a big Cooper. You know, I like a lot of Cooper stuff. I'd never been that fond of that song. Uh, This song kicks some ass. He is screaming his head off in this thing. And this is the other song where I noticed something tonight that I don't remember noticing before. And that is a callback to I Want You. If you listen to the, as this song is starting to fade out, it is the same as on Rock and Roll Over starting to fade out with the ding, ding, that guitar playing. It is yeah. a fucking identical. It had to be done on purpose. It wow. was like listening to I Want You's fade out on this song, wow. listening to the end of this song. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, listen to both songs and you'll find out. I will too because that's probably one of my. It's favorite not big. Songs. It's not big. We're we're talking about ten to fifteen seconds at the end on the fade out of both songs, and you're going to hear it do the identical thing. Wow! And hey, thank God, man, that you like this song that much because I'm I was beginning to think that maybe I was fucking twisted or something, you know. And then look, I'm not. I, I think I've heard people might have say it be in the middle somewhere or something. Not, not me. very bothered. Not me ever. Not every not podcast me. I've ever heard they shit on this song right down on the bottom with "I finally found my way." I mean, it's ridiculous. I've never got it, just like you never got it. What the hell's there not to love? What are you looking for? This is creatures yeah. of the night power. I, I don't understand. Whatever. And, and Paul vocals, bro. He's yeah. running into vocals after he's coming off of a high. I'm dreaming between the darkness and yeah. the light. I'm more, I mean, and then he'll go back into a high. Exactly. He's a oh, it's fucking incredible song. For it to dethrone, for anything on this album to dethrone Psycho Circus, it shocked the hell out of me, but why not another Paul song? All day yeah. long, bro. <clears throat> he serves of psycho service guys and i'm pretty sure you guys were probably ready for something uh not probably great because of nostalgia and what was going on you know what it's the music but you know it's the music man and, and i encourage remember- anybody who's who's been in our boat and, and had the same uh attitude we do i guess for lack of better words if there were albums that just didn't do it for you and you've literally put them on the back burner for five, 10, 20 or more years, go fucking listen to it. In, in one shot on a good system, turn it up loud. So everything is, you know, perfect. You got the bass, you got the high end, everything, not some fucking, not turning it on your fucking iPhone and listening it through the speaker. No, and just no, no. no interruptions by the wife, the husband, the cat, the dog, the baby, whatever, and just let the whole album play and see what you think now because I was 50-50 on this album. It's now at least in my probably top 10. It's <clears throat> it's quite a bladder for me too, man. It, it really has. And I just, I can't 
really say anything. You know, I contradict myself all the time when I haven't revisited something, dude. These ears hear things as I've gotten older that it didn't hear or I wasn't paying enough attention to things. I do now. I guess that comes with age, you know. Yep. But damn, a great album and listening to it now, I can't believe it didn't do as good as it did especially with them putting Ace and Peter on it at the time. Well, you know, in doing my prep, though, it did get, uh, I don't know what site or whatever. It got, it was like in Metal Edge or something like that. It got Album of the Year, and Psycho Circus got Song of the Year. So it had success, maybe not on the Billboard, you know, rankings, but within the metal community, it it got good rankings within the metal people. If I'm not mistaken, it was around 15 on the chart, you know, and, and, and uh, hey, that's not bad, but that's just no. pretty damn good. I, I don't Somebody know. Somebody else never, it, ever hit right? the chart at all. So, yeah. Exactly, man. But, all right. Well, I'll let hey. you tend to what you've got to tend to. You can get back to me later if you want. Yeah, I will. Everybody, and, uh, everybody go check out Psycho Circus again. And if you have not watched the last video on the new-ish Ace Freely song with Pepe Castro, watch it. See what you think of the song. Uh, do some deep diving on Pepe. He's done some incredible things. I was pleasantly surprised in the comment section that several people already knew who he was and had mentioned that he had co-wrote Naked City with Gene Simmons on Unmasked. So. I guess uh, that should do it for this one, then, unless you got something to add. Hey, just give us your uh, give us your thoughts, guys. What do you like on here? What's your least favorite? Uh, rediscover it. Maybe you like it better than you did, like we did. I'm shocked. Yeah. Okay. Until next time, everybody. Thanks for watching.